It's like it's a joke. How would you like when the insurance come to tell you, well, if you got homeowners, all right, we're gonna, whatever one outweighs the most is the one we gonna pay. Wait, hold on. Yeah, they're telling me, well, if you only had homeowners, I say, okay, if I had homeowners, what would you pay me for? Just homeowners. I say, if I had flood, what would you pay me for? Just flood. I say, so I have two. Why would you tell me I'm only, whichever one outweighs the most is the one you gonna pay me? They still got people, man. They, they, they got people that still missing. We got over 2,300 people still missing. Wow. They find bodies down here every nine years. 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 We just saw three tour buses pass by us. The tour buses were full of people that have paid money to come down here and see the ruins and the destruction. They come to see the levees. They come to see the houses abandoned. Imagine waking up on a Sunday morning, you got your Sunday best on, mama's in the other room, she's got dinner cooking. Now you hear that there's a storm coming. So you prepare, you get the blankets, you get the towels, because being prepared is always necessary. <laughs> but nothing in the world could ever prepare you for a female that has no face, but has terror inside of her to destroy the lives of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. My name is Kirk Franklin. And I'm here in New Orleans 365 days later to tell you the story of a lady and the life she has affected. Her name, Katrina. So what I think is very incredible, though, is that you being a man of faith that can be encouraging other people is that your faith was shaken. Depression was trying yes, to sir. come in, you know. I, That's real. Yes, that, That's that real. is real. That's when you real. don't want to preach it, you know you're called to preach. That's real. Uh, but man, it was just everything coming down on me all at the same time because yes. for the first time in 30 years, I was unemployed. Wow. You know, uh, wow. you, you always look forward to your retirement, That's but, right. but my God. And not too many pastors <laughs> can ever say that there's a point in their life where they're ever unemployed because well, there's always people always, to pastor. Always, right, right. And so it was a whole new, different kind of situation for my life. Share with me one story that you've heard through all of this that for you I mean, you may have had to just go into the bathroom and just get the, uh, you know, the, the, the Kleenex. I, I mean, a story about what happened that it even for you was like, that's a hard one. Well, you know, there are so many devastating stories when you have wow. people. I mean, we've actually had members that, that were doing fine in, in different places and getting our database together and, and knowing where our members are just drop dead. I mean, not sick, but just holding stuff on the inside. I mean, they've been here all of their lives. Their family has been here, 
all of a sudden, they just couldn't take it anymore and just heart gives out. They didn't die in the storm, they died from the pain of the storm. The pain of the storm, and that's what a whole lot of people are dealing with, and that's why we do so much counseling now, because that's there's beautiful. so much in, inside of people that's that beautiful. they got to get out of them. So then how can we, 365 days later, with, with cars still in the middle of the streets, with with electricity still off, with people still waiting for FEMA and waiting for the government to come to the rescue. In the meantime, what 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 is the word for in the meantime? In the meantime, and I, I teach our people this all the time because again, when when FEMA moves slow, when insurance companies move slow, you know, what is going on in my life? I tell people what you need to do is just get up, go look in the mirror and talk to yourself and say, I'm still here. Yeah. And if I'm still here, I'm still here for a reason. Yes. God left me here for a reason. I yes. could have been floating in the street. I yes. could have died on the roof. I yes. could have died in the convention center. Yes. But I'm still here. So if I'm still here, there's a purpose. Yes. There's a plan yes. for my life. Will New Orleans come back? Will New Orleans come back? New Orleans will come back, but it is going to be a slow process. Mm. But I'll be honest with you. I know this city and know this city well. There are people who do not want many of our people back in this city. Wow. So if I can keep them away. That's real talk. If I can keep them away. I mean, after a year, what do you do? You want to come home. People want to come home, but there's, they can't get a job. If you can yeah. get a job, then there's no place to stay. Yes. It's like, it's like a oh, game. Oh, the red tape, and tape can be cut. cut the, that sounds like a song. Cut, cut the, the tape. tape. Cut the tape. We're going to write a song. We're going to write a song. Cut the me tape. and you. Go yes. Cut the tape. Uh, yes. The tape was made to be cut. <laughs> That's a deal. Call it your boy. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Cut the tape. <laughs> My good friend. Bishop Paul S. Martin, 365 days later, y'all, we're back in New Orleans. We're going to talk to some members, some people that were in the grind. They're going to give it to us real. I'll let you boy. Okay, well, brother, let me say one thing. I stayed here for the entire 33, 34 days before they started letting people back in the city. I stay out here in the Garden District back here. Uh -huh. We didn't get no water back here. And I want to let it be known that the Homeland Security people, uh -huh. the police, uh -huh. the National Guard, uh -huh. they was part of the crime and the civil unrest here. Mm. So the people here don't trust, do they? Oh, no, man. Look, this is one of the most corrupt cities there is. You How know? can we get the people to trust again here? How can we What's get up, the boo? people uh, to trust one doing? another? I believe uh, the solution to that is all us coming together and uh, as men and don't worry about our political persuasions, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. religious persuasion yeah. and work for one common goal, yeah. unity amongst our people. You know, we want so let me ask you this then. Here's the big question then. Uh -huh. If I was Bush and if I came down here right now to you mm -hmm. and if I wrote you a check mm -hmm. for a million dollars just to help your community, uh -huh. could I trust you with a million dollars to, to affect your community? Well, yes you could, but let me say this here. I would, a million dollars not going to do me good for my community. I, you know, if it's not good for the whole, it ain't no good you for me. You got so many people, it's like FEMA was giving Orleans Paris like six hundred something dollars per, per person. Out in Jefferson Paris, they was getting that other, it's, it's a racial thing, they was getting these families six thousand dollars, six thousand five hundred dollars. In other words, they got twenty three hundred dollars from them. Uh -huh. We got twenty three, uh -huh. and these people was getting and, six thousand dollars. And parents, they got five and six thousand dollars of families. They helping people in the media area right here. We go to the ninth wall, the ninth wall. So can yeah. New Orleans come back? Of it course it can, back. and it will come back by the grace of God. Tell them people that.